the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts, that I will be loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Hello? Kildare speaking. Oh, Dr. Kildare, thank heaven. I hoped you'd still be in the laboratory. Who's this? Nurse Hallett in post-operative on the fourth floor. Doctor, I know you're not on duty tonight. What's but... the trouble, Miss Hallett? I- I'm not quite sure, but could you possibly come up here at once? Why, yes, of course. I'll be there right away. I just happened to go in the room, Doctor. You see, the patient isn't on my assignment, and I didn't know what to do about it. Well, is there a doctor on call for this floor tonight? Well, Dr. Pierce, but he's in surgery with an emergency case, and, of course, I didn't want to call Dr. Carew. A patient with a preoperative cardiac history should have had a special intern. Well, there was one assigned. Who? Dr. Lane. Lane, huh? Where is he? I, I don't know, Doctor. I, I couldn't find him. Here we are. Couldn't find him? Did you call the intern's dormitory? Well, yes. Well, they said he went out earlier. Went out? Come on, let's go in. Yes. Mm. Pulse rapid and weak. All right, Miss Hallett, bring an intravenous tray, standard strophanthin in 5cc normal. Very well, Doctor. I may need some oxygen. Call the basement and have an inhalator sent up here. Yes, Doctor. And nurse, hurry. Oh, Kildare. Hello, Dr. Gillespie. Come in now. I want to talk to you. Sure. Well, Dr. Kildare, how's the patient? Patient? Yeah, the patient. I assume the term is familiar to you. Oh, yes. Um, which one? Which one? The one you just spent two hours with. Oh, well, that was only a case of delayed post-operative shock. It's out of danger now. Uh, what about that intern? Lane, shown up yet? Uh, apparently those stooges of yours report even at night. I uh, didn't make any report on Lane. Why not? Because if I reported him, he'd be kicked out of the hospital by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Ah, oh, what a pity. And for only letting a patient almost die... <laughs> The injustice of it. But the patient didn't die, Dr. Gillespie. Yeah. I've watched young Lane around here for the last year. Now, he's a hard worker, serious and conscientious. He's the best diagnostician on the whole intern staff. Well, now, maybe he's out diagnosing something tonight. The fourth race tomorrow, for example. Uh, he may have had a good reason for leaving. I don't know. But I'm not going to toss him to the wolves without finding out. Yeah. You mean... You're a resident doctor here now, and you've no business going around covering up for other interns. Maybe not, but I'm still going to wait until I... Ah, drat that. 
USB speaking. Kildare? Yes, he's right here. Just a minute. It's Carew. He wants to talk to you. Our esteemed superintendent must have had his own studios working tonight. Yeah. Kildare speaking. But just a second, Dr. Carew. I don't know of any dereliction of duty. As far as I can tell, Dr. Lane simply misunderstood his instructions. Duh. And since there was no harm done, I suggest we drop the matter. I can't see any reason for an investigation. Yes, of course I have complete confidence in Dr. Lane. In fact, if you if you will assign him to me for the next few weeks, I'll take full personal responsibility for his behavior. Still there? Fine. Thanks, Dr. Carew. Good night. Personal responsibility. It's a fine spot you put me on. I'm personally responsible for you. Did you ever consider that? Dr. Gillespie, a man I have a lot of respect for used to say, when you believe you're doing the right thing, then go ahead and do it, no matter what it costs. And I agree with that. Ah, sentimental twaddle. Any man who told you that was a nincompoop. And you ought to know. You were the man. Hmm. Good night, Dr. Gillespie. <laughs> Dare I? Might as well come on in. It's your room. Well, uh, sure. Well, this is quite a surprise. I imagine. Been on an emergency call? Uh, no, uh, personal business. I. Oh, you mean the medical kit? I, I just happened to take it along. I see. Was this personal business pretty important? Well, uh, so-so. Care to tell me what it was? No. I'd uh, rather not. Mm. Lane, I suppose you're wondering why I've been waiting here for you. Well, I guess maybe you found out I was supposed to be on special assignment tonight. That, and the fact your patient in 417 came pretty close to dying. But I was sure he was out of danger. Not sure enough. The worst thing is Carew found out about it. Oh. All right, I'll start packing up my things. No, sit down. Maybe we can work it out. You can start by telling me why you left here tonight. I can't answer that, Dr. Kildare. I told Carew I'd stand personally responsible for your actions. Why did you have to do that? Nobody asked you to. I've never asked anybody for help around here, and I'm not starting now. We'll get by some way, and if we... I mean, I'll work things out my own way. You said we. Who's we? I... I have nothing more to say. Uh, you're carrying pride too far, Lane. It's only making it tough for both of us. I'm sorry. I've already told you I left here tonight for personal reasons, and that's all there is to it. That's not all there is to it. On the day a man walks out of medical school and starts internship, his personal business, right then and for the rest of his life, takes a backseat to his profession. If he's not willing to accept that, he hasn't any business going into medicine, and you know it. You believe it as much as I do, or at least you did. Now, what's come over you? I'm sorry, Dr. Kildare. I, uh, I have nothing to say. All right, Lane. Report to me at the lab in the morning. You mean I've still got my job here? Sure, why not? I told you I'd covered for you with Carew. That's late. Better get some sleep. I understand you want to see me, Dr. Gillespie. What's up? What's up? What? Can't I ask a man to drop in here for a friendly visit without having a motive behind it? Oh, sure, sure. Well, however, as long as you are here... There does happen to be, uh... If... Parker, get away from that keyhole. Well, I wasn't even near the keyhole. <laughs> Look at her. Pops out just like a jack-in-the-box. Oh, you... Big ears. Oh, someday I... I... Oh. <laughs> sit down, Jimmy, sit down. Thanks. Now, uh, what's on your mind? Oh, just wondering how soon you'll get to the point. Point? <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Uh, I want to know about that protege of yours, Lane. Wasn't that his name? No complaints. He's stuck right on the job all week. Uh -huh. Find out why he left that night, Jimmy? No, and I wish I could. Something's pushed that kid right to the breaking point, and I don't know what it is. He can't get past that independent pride of his. I just don't know. Yeah, another victim of the invisible diseases. Oh. Fear, worry, frustration, doubt. 
They take more lives than cancer and heart trouble put together. Invisible diseases. Jimmy, you made a big mistake when you stopped Carew firing Lane. You don't throw a man out of the hospital because he has a disease. You do when he's a doctor. At least until he's over it. If Lane were suspended, he'd never get another chance, and you know that. Good thing. Saved a lot of trouble. Kildare, have you been doing any spectroscopic work in your lab lately? Well, no, of course not. Planning to? Oh, why? <clears throat> well, um, I have a requisition here from the instrument storeroom. Ordinarily, I sign these things as a matter of routine. But I happen to take particular notice of this one. Why so? It's for a Type C analytical spectroscope. A delicate instrument they don't have a call for once in six months. Highly portable and worth about 800 bucks. Still don't see what you're driving at. Mm -hmm. Just this. It says here the spectroscope was put on permanent charge to kill Dare's laboratory. What? And picked up by... Oh, yeah. Here it is. By Dr. Lane. By Dr. Gillespie. About all that's left for him to do next is to dynamite the building. All right. I'll sign that requisition myself. <laughs> right to the bitter end, huh? Never say die. There you are. Well, what now, Don Quixote Kildare? I guess we better go have a talk with Lane. Well, his clothes are still here in the closet, Dr. Gillespie. Books there on the desk. He hasn't skipped out, apparently. <laughs> Probably trying to sell that spectroscope somewhere. Cashing in on the loot, I think it's called. Oh, we don't know that's why he took it. Money. Every time an intern gets himself in trouble around here, the reason for it's always money. You mean the lack of it, with the salary an intern gets? The lack of it, love of it, too much of it, still money. Makes big men out of little ones and little men out of big ones. Mm -hmm. He's in a state of mind for it, too. Hello, Sally. Get me Wayman down in the garage and hurry. Kildare, if it isn't asking too much, just what is all this about? Vehicle department. Joe Wayman cooks. Joe, this is Kildare. Got anybody to leave on call down there? Yeah, a couple of boys, Doc. What's cooking? Emergency. Warm up an ambulance and wait for me and be right down. Gotcha, boss. I'll have it on the ramp. What's going on? Here. Look. Life insurance policy for $5,000 on Robert Lane. Yes, taken out only three weeks ago. Name's uh, Margaret Evans as beneficiary. Address down on the east side. Well, what about it? If you're right about money being the cause of his trouble, that policy pays double indemnity for accidental death. <laughs> The story of Dr. Kildare will continue in just a moment. Continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. This is the place, boss. The address on the policy was 3819. Come on, Joe. 3819. Evans. Uh, Evans? Hey, you know something? You know what? This is the place Jackson come on a call about two hours ago and he bring back a dame named Evans. A maternity case. What? You know, he's gonna have a baby. Thanks, Joe. Look, are you sure of that? Who was her doctor? Dr. Long. She called him and he gave us the order. Is this dame a friend of yours? Then? No. Or a friend of a friend. Uh, yeah. huh. Apartment D. Must be near the back. <laughs> kind of a crummy looking dump. Yeah. Well, here we are. Who you want to see, her husband? Yes, her 
husband. He must be out. Hey. It was. The door ain't locked. Oh. All right, let's go in. Find the light, Joe. Uh, uh, yes. I got it. Yeah. Nobody home. Mm. Not much of anything else, either. Pretty barren room. Yeah. This shed it. I bet there's not even mice. Oh. A notebook here on the table. Notebook? Let's see it, Joe. Funny. What's funny? There's about a dozen names and addresses with symptoms, diagnoses, and treatment listed under each name. I don't quite see how this ties in unless... Doc, it's... let me ask you one thing. Do you know what we're looking for? I thought I did, but... Well, come on, let's start working down the list. We may be too late already. Okay. Uh, you know, boss... That photograph back there on the dresser looks a little like Dr. Lane. It ought to. That's who it is. Of course, it ain't him, but... It... Hey, it is. It is? Sure. It's Lane. Come on, Joe. Let's go. Wait here, Joe. Be right back. This better be it, Doc. We only got two more names left on that list you found. Good evening. You're Mrs. Riccardi? Why, yes. I'm looking for a man oh, named... There. I'm here. Come on in. Hello, Lane. Good evening, Doctor. Fancy meeting you here. Quite a coincidence. You're treating a patient here? Yeah. The little girl asleep there on the bed. Oh, yes. I think this one was listed as arrested tuberculosis. You seem to have found out a lot of things. I was just leaving... Uh... Unless you'd like to check my diagnosis. No, I'm sure it's all right. Let's go. Same treatment, Mrs. Riccardi. Keep her quiet and keep her on that diet. Yes, doctor. You're coming next week, Dr. Lane? Well, uh, yes. Or somebody will. Good night. Let's stop here a second. How long have you been practicing illegal medicine down here, Lane? About a month. How did you find out about it, anyway? I didn't. I came down here because I found an insurance policy you took out three weeks ago. Oh. Well, that was only meant for a last resort. You were badly in need of money, is that it? Yes. And that's why you finally took the spectroscope, I suppose? You don't miss any bets, do you? Did you sell it? Pawned it. $300. All right. Let's go pick it up before we go back to the hospital. I... I don't have the money. I do. Come on. Good evening, gents. Something I can do for you? Yes, I have a pawn ticket here. I want to pay the loan and pick up the article. Oh, yeah, fine, fine. Uh, uh, what is the article? An analytic spectroscope. Oh, yeah, an analytic... Oh, uh, sorry, Mac. About what? Uh, this here spectroscope, I ain't got it. Well, this ticket represents a claim on it. Why haven't you got it? Boss, you want I should tap him one with the wrench? Easy, uh, No, 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 wait a minute, Mac. Don't start no rough stuff. It ain't my fault. Go argue with the police. The police? Sure. Some inspector from the precinct house phoned trying to locate it. When I said I had it, he sent over a stenographer to pay the loan and pick it up. What could I do? Well, that does it. Come on, Joe. Yeah. Boss, maybe I should tap him once? to see if he's telling the truth. Forget it, Joe. I can't understand how the news got out so fast. <laughs> Everybody always finds out everything in that hospital. What happened, Dr. Kildare? Didn't you get it? Sorry, Lane. The police have already picked it up. The police? Well. Well, thanks for trying, anyway. I'd hope we could work out this part of it, at least, before I told you about Margaret. Margaret? What about her? She's at the hospital. Been there since around 7 o'clock. I knew the time was getting close. Look, we got to get back there right away. All right, let's go. For the time being, Lane, forget about this other. You'll have enough to worry about your wife. My wife? She's not my wife. No? You mean you two ain't married? Of course not. Margaret's my sister. Come on, Wayman, hit that siren. Oh! <laughs> It's 
So, as I say, Dr. Kildare, three months ago, Margaret's husband left her. She came here to New York. She didn't have any other place to go. See, we've been on our own ever since we were kids, and I've always looked out for her. Calling Dr. Everett. Why didn't you tell someone about it? We could have worked out some solution right here in the hospital. I've always handled my own problems in my own way. In this case, it wasn't a very good way. I was wrong. But things were pushing so fast that... Well, anyway, it's done. All I hope now is that Margaret gets along okay. She's been in that delivery room nearly an hour now, Bush. You think something more to be done? Such as what? Well, I don't know. Something. Well, I'll swan. Now, this isn't the first baby I ever heard of that had three godfathers waiting for him to arrive. Hello, Parker. How's it going in there? Oh, any minute now, Dr. Kildare. And Joe Wayman, you'd better get down to that garage where you belong. You know what'll happen if Dr. Gillespie catches you up here. Ah, oh, gee, uh, him. I'm getting tired of him yelling like that. The next time he barks at me, I'm going to throw him a can of strong heart. He can't talk to me like a dog. Why, the next time he tries that... Wait, I'm man! Gonna, I, I'm going to... Yeah, get yeah. down to the garage where you belong. Yes, Go on. Y yes, sir, Dr. Gillespie. Yes, sir, right away. And big ears, Parker. Look at you, twittering around like an expectant father. Well, I am not. How do you know you're not? You ever been a father? Well, of course not. I... Go on, go... now, go on. Get back in there and go to work. Yeah. Oh, horrible man. <laughs> well, now that I properly littered the field with bodies, how's your sister coming along, Lane? Well, fine, I guess. Parker said any minute now. Good, good, good. Then everything seems to have worked out all right. Well, I wouldn't quite say that. At least not as far as I'm concerned, Dr. Gillespie. What's that? Well, now, Kildare, I thought you'd assume responsibility for this boy and we're going to get everything straightened out for him. Well, one thing got out of hand, Dr. Gillespie. The police have that spectroscope. Spectroscope? You don't mean the one that's standing on the desk down there in your laboratory. What? Well, I saw it myself less than half an hour ago. Oh, I thought the police got into that pretty fast. Dr. Gillespie, were you the inspector who had it picked up from the pawn shop? I don't know what you're talking about. And, Lane, you owe me $300, payable one year from the day you graduate. Dr. Gillespie, Kildare, I... Thanks. Well, gentlemen, in case anybody's interested, it's a boy. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Evan. Thank a heaven. boy, eh? Parker, did Dr. Long say so, or is that your own idea? Oh, poo to you, Dr. Gillespie. At times like this, you can just take a back seat for once. You've never been a mother. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Jimmy, for the world's greatest diagnostician, it was very simple. I put all the facts together, diagnosed a pawn shop, and started phoning. <laughs> I got the right one on the seventh call. All right, that explains it. You know, you ran up quite a criminal record for yourself. Aiding and abetting an intern in dereliction of his duty, in practicing medicine without a license, and the grand larceny of hospital property? <laughs> Remarkable. And I suppose you think it was all worth it. Yes, I do think it was worth it. Lane will be all right now. All he needed was to have the pressure off long enough to let him start thinking straight again. Without help, he'd have been no use to anybody. And as it is, he'll walk out of here next year a doctor. A good one. We don't have too many of them. Yes, I know it was worth it. 
You know, Jimmy, you've got one of those invisible diseases yourself. Such as? Uh, one called chronic faith in human nature. <laughs> Sounds serious. Uh, it is. No cure for it either, as far as I know. Of course, there's not much pain except when complications set in. Maybe I could try cold showers or a change of diet. Or no, 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 Dr. Kildare. I'm afraid you'll just go on suffering from it as long as you live. Well, in that case, Dr. Gillespie, suppose we don't worry too much about it, because I never felt better in my life. <laughs> You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Dr. Kildare is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of East Side, West Side, starring Barbara Stanwyck, James Mason, Van Heflin, and Ava Gardner. The program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. <laughs>